Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode. Today we're looking at a camera that has never ever seen a roll of film in its life. It's a virgin camera, it has never uh, had a film shot through it. Um, I like communist uh, country cameras, specifically the Russian ones, but the Chinese also manufactured cameras and this is one of them. This is a Seagull uh, made in Shanghai in China. These were made from the 1960s and they're still made today. They're still currently available. Um, the firm is hanging on just, obviously. When these were made they were so expensive that the average Chinese person couldn't afford one. Only people in the press or in government had the money that they could afford to buy this sort of camera. This is the Shanghai 4B1. Um, this is a, an introduction model, it's a basic model. There is also a 4A version as well, that's the more higher specified version. And as you can see it's a 120 twin lens reflex camera. Um, still in its original box. So although this isn't an unboxing channel, today it is. <laughs> so inside we have the instruction guide which needless to say is um, in Chinese and English quite detailed don't get the original instruction guide and the specifications in English and in Chinese see this is a I don't know what year this was manufactured I'm not really an expert on seagull they did make SLR cameras as well um, they took over making Minolta manual cameras uh, when Minolta moved on to the uh, the autofocus mount I think it's called the A mount you can see even the strap is brand new in the bag so here is the camera itself let's take it out of the box have a look at it. It's quite attractive really in the black. So it has a lens cover. Very simple lenses apparently. These are just triplets, they're just three element lenses based on the cook design. But yeah, pretty traditional sort of layout. Obviously we have the uh, the viewing lens and the taking lens. This is to um, cock the shutter. Shutter speed is selectable by this dial here. Very very simple. Different shutter speeds. Obviously we've got a B setting and it goes from one second through to three hundredth of a second. I imagine it's the same as the Russian cameras in that you cock it before you change the shutter speed. And here we have the aperture settings. It's a 3.5 all the way down to 22. It's not click stopped, it's just uh, continuously variable. Self timer button down at the bottom, PC sync port, and uh, I think this is lockable. A lockable shutter release, and you can also fit a, uh, a cable release in there. This is the sound of the shutter. Very quiet, very discreet. That's it cocked. There's no interlock so you can do multiple exposures on the one piece of film. On the side here we have the usual spool obviously goes in the bottom and feeds up to the top so these are the bits that you pull out and this is the focusing. So the standard sort of thing, the whole lens Standard sort of moves forward, depth of field scale, and a cold shoe. So technically not very advanced at all. On the back we have the frame counter. And this camera can shoot unusually, actually, for the Seagull cameras. This can shoot 645 as well as 6x6. And you have these, uh, you have to count from the backing paper. Unlike the Rollies, there's no... Uh, there's no locking mechanism, there's no degree of sophistication. 
and on this side we have the wind on spool. So this is our wind on lever on this side, and on the top we have a viewfinder, just a pop up viewfinder. So uh, there is a pop up magnifier for this. It comes up. Unfortunately, it doesn't cover the whole area, so it's not particularly easy to use. And this one also has oop, the sports finder. So you can pop the front down, and there's a little hole in the back here. You can look through. This gives you the sports finder side of it. No fancy focusing while you're using it. You focus by guessing, I expect. That's the uh, zone focusing method. Pops up, comes down. Quite a nice bright screen actually on this. It's got a better screen than the earlier ones. But yep, yeah, that just folds down. Not interchangeable, no prism finders or anything like that. And then to open the back, open and close. So you just oh, turn this dial, which has got a lock on it, a little lock button here. Slide that round to open, very similar system to the Rollies. The back just folds open, as you can see, it's absolutely immaculate, never been used. So your film would go in the bottom, it comes up over the top, no fancy automated system for loading. Up onto the top spool, this is your film advance. Like I said, if you want to remove the spool, this is why these pull out. And this one has the mask in or uh, 645, if you take the mask out that gives you the full 6x6 six six. full 6x6 six six size, pop the mask in very simple, 645 so as I said you just have to use the, uh, the marking on the backing paper to keep track of uh, your exposures very simple camera. Like I say this one has never been uh, never been used. So I'm not going to load it with any film. I'm not going to spoil it. But uh, yeah, there you can see it's it's quite a good looking camera. It's unusual. As I say the, the shutter works on it. And there you can see the iris. Possibly not. Here's the iris. It's on the B setting. Very quiet, very discreet. Quite a nice little camera really. Shame it's never really been used, but uh, obviously as a collector you want to keep it that way. I exercise it now and again, I do take it out and run through the shutter speeds. Seems fairly reliable, there's not a lot to go wrong really, is there? It's uh, no metering, no electronics, very, very simple. And uh, yeah, there we have it. This is a Seagull 4B1 and it shoots uh, 6x6 or uh, 6x4.5. There's no mask for the viewfinder, but there are lines on the, on the grid to show you your composition. Thank you very much for watching, hope you found it interesting. Another communist camera, uh, this time from China. Hope to see you in the next one.